Yes, indeed. It is profile time. And who have we got this week? Oh. <laughs> he gets excited. <laughs> he excites himself for the profile. <laughs> great. Well, when I tell you that it's Lothar Mateus. Whoa. Hey, good. That was justified wiggling yeah. <laughs> Br- brilliant player wiggle me this wiggle the me end <laughs> <laughs> roll credit oh dear did you know that he was born on the 21st of March Didn't 1961 six years before the summer of love yeah exactly that's when he was born people we can get on with it now um he, uh, do you know, he completed uh, an apprenticeship in interior decoration after leaving school. Did he? Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. He was also to, uh, told that he was, uh, when he was obviously much younger, that he was too short to become a professional footballer. That's interesting because he, he actually started playing football at a reasonably high level quite young. Mm-hmm. So I don't, I don't know how he managed to fit that in as well. Let him. He would have been in the, he was in the, um, he was in the Euro 80 squad. He, was, yeah. he only would have been about 18 then Yeah he was, he was, he was a young lad mm. A young lad uh, he just e- Efficient He probably finished school at 12 He was like <laughs> yeah, yeah. Next yeah, thing yeah, yeah. <laughs> He is actually that sort of person yeah, He's good at everything Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah in, Well it was in 79 He signed for uh, Borussia Mönchengladbach mm. uh, Who were a, a really big side in the 70s mm. Let's see. Uh, but and he signed in 79 So it's not relevant <laughs> Well it, it, it was off the back I'm only joking I'm only joking Pe- pedant um, uh, and uh, straight in you know he was um, one of those guys a bit like sort of uh, you know the gigs or skulls you know, you know when they were even when they were young you think oh they're an older head sort of yeah, thing yeah. you know uh, straight in there and uh, it soon became a starter and you wait for cup final in his first season um, they were beaten but uh, he still reached one uh, and uh, as you said look he was a part of the Germany squad for uh, the European Championships in 1980 which they won didn't they um, they won that they did uh, although he um, was an unused sub in the final but still uh, more on he's his getting own. the experience exactly yeah. <laughs> he, had a, he had a bigger win there later. Early. Yeah. but you know absolutely incredible yeah um, a great player a great player yeah. he was a part of the 82 World Cup side uh, Germany World Cup side in, in Spain uh, although he, he had a bit more of a, a bit part role I suppose so he's uh, you know gradually he getting young. yeah oh, hmm. very much so yeah um, and then uh, he in 1984 he, he moved to Bayern Munich um, under Ugo Latek uh, mm. legendary coach one of the most successful in the game I think and he started to become a real sort of attacking midfielder uh, more of a playmaker which is of course where we kind of knew him when he moved yeah. him into uh, I love the fact that he was really strong and broad yeah as he well. was There's no very muscly around. yeah yeah, yeah. Um, and he of course went to the 86 World Cup in Mexico uh, where he was playing in midfield and and they reached the final mm. and were beaten by uh, Maradona's Argentina. Burachaga scored in the final, I think. He, he did indeed. Um, and then Franz Beckenbauer uh, made Matthias the Germany captain in 1987, mm. which uh, was quite something. Because yeah. uh, in 88 they got to the uh, European Champions uh, semi final, but it was uh, all about 1990. Mm. Well, well, he had signed for Inter by then. He'd signed for Inter, yep. Because that's one of the things I always sort of forget, and it's worth m- mentioning, is that. Part of the reason that under Trapattoni, absolutely, yeah. and part of the reason that, well, other than the fact that he was brilliant, the, I think <laughs> the thing that added to it was the fact that he was so used to playing in Italy. So, so when the World Cup came around in Italy, that's right. He, he's been, yeah, he, I've actually course. read it where he said he felt at home and he felt Bremer as well. Yeah, mm. yeah absolutely right. Well, yeah. there were quite a few players in that Germany squad playing in Italy at the time, weren't there? There was, yeah. Cl- no. Klinsmann was at Inter. I, I, yeah. I don't know what time, I don't know what year Klinsmann was at Inter, but mm. those three were because you had the three Dutch boys at Milan and the three yeah. German boys at Inter. Yeah, yeah. And he won the Scudetto in his first season. Inter as well he seemed to score all, all his goals from he wouldn't be in the ruck for a corner he wouldn't be in the box at all no, he just, just, he'd be on the corner lurking, yeah. Yeah, he'd just be on, on the yeah. penalty spot or something and he'd just rifle some shots in absolute he, hammer blow <laughs> he, he scored one for Bayern where I can't remember now in my head I think it's the first time I saw this done uh, and then we saw Beckham and Scholes do it at Bradford when the, the ball's knocked out to the edge of the box mm-hmm. and he volleys it in off the bar perfectly mm. <laughs> it's a different class it's like a bloke with horses legs <laughs> <laughs> he, had, he had an all round game because you, which you'll come on to in a minute probably when as he got a bit older he moved back into the sweeper role yeah. which meant he could he could play on in 48 yeah. World Cup <laughs> but, yeah. when he, but when he played in that centre <laughs> mid he, I mean you loved the goal he scored was it against Yugoslavia where he, he drives 
drives. Start in his own half. Yeah. The epitome of a midfielder driving well, forward. Because he doesn't look. He doesn't look quick. He, he's not. He's not a player who you think. Oh, he's a quick player. But he eats up ground. Sort yeah, of in yeah. the way that Xavi and Iniesta do. And yeah. and, he, and he got the ball just inside his own half. It's worth looking at on the internet if you get a chance. And he sort of jinks it between a couple of players. And he gets about probably 25, 28 yards out. And he just smashes Thunders. it in the bottom corner. Yeah. With like hardly any, sort of not yeah. much back lift. And but it's he, a great goal. One of the was, goals of the tournament. He was magnificent in the ninety World Cup. And it was. He was the best player in the tournament. Yeah. And of course they won. Opinion. They won uh, the World Cup, which was the third time lucky. Eighty two in the final. Eighty six in the final. Mm, ninety. Yeah. Um, they kept, they kept at it. As well. yeah, yeah, that's it. Absolutely incredible. And he won the Ballon d'Or that year. And of course, German Player of the Year. He was the best player in that World Cup, in my opinion. And then a year later, in '91, he was um, the inaugural FIFA World Player of the Year. Have some you, of that. Uh, who can argue with that, Pete? <laughs> Not me. Not history. Mm. Um, and also <laughs> won the UEFA Cup that year as well. Uh, he rejoined uh, Bayern in, in uh, 1992. Now, I mean, '92, he was in his early 30s. In 1992, <laughs> yeah. you consider how long he went on, yeah. and this is as you uh, alluded to earlier, Luke. Um, or said he moved from the more attacking midfield to a sweeper role. Yeah. But he had a long career there as well, didn't he? Oh, he did, yeah. He was, he was at, he was at Bayern Munich the second time round. Did he play in Euro 2000? He did. Well, we will move on. To that. <laughs> yeah, so he, he, he was there for a long time. Um, and, th- and of course, Beckenbauer was, uh, well, still is involved in Bayern. Mm. You know, his old mentor. Um, and they won the league. Bayern won the league in '94. And then, of course, he went to the World Cup in '94. They reached the quarterfinals. Now, I love that Germany reaching the quarterfinals is yeah. a complete gutty with that. Yeah. <laughs> Gutted. For us, it's a national holiday. But they're, but they're not gutted. Um, and then he had a few injury problems, but uh, in the in '95. But he played a major part in Bayern's UEFA Cup win in in '96. Well, they were a force then, no, Bayern. Yeah, they really were. Oh, they were yeah. one of those teams. If you if you I think came up Norwich against City, them, you'd just think, they? yeah. But Bayern. you would, they're, they're, you'd want to avoid them in Europe. Yes, very much. Proper right. like, oh, it's the the bad guys. Yeah, sort of yeah. Team. Well, well, oh, oh, absolutely. And I remember, for, but I, I, conversely, because I because nineteen ninety is my favourite World Cup, and because Matthias was the best player at that World Cup, I had a lot of affection for him. Yeah. and I felt genuinely gutted. Uh, that when they because he the, the only, I don't think he ever won the Champions League and he might he would have won it in ninety nine yeah but they, well, they missed out because of the because of the two minute Man United goal they he did, twice yeah. though, didn't they? he didn't well that's right yeah, yeah. in, in eighty seven Porto won it and it was and it was again it was it was so similar to the way they lost it against Manchester United it wasn't quite as late on in the game I think it was about the seventy eighth and eightieth minute right Bayern were one up and had been leading for a while and then Porto hit them th- th- two goals towards the end God, and they gutting. lost yeah. and that's then it happened awful. again but in more cruel uh, circumstances. Yeah. Against um, Manchester United, um, but before that, he went to the World Cup in in '98 at the age of 37 because he was um, replaced uh, Matthias Sammer who was injured. He missed out on Euro '96. Yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. as he would do. I mean, he was 35, you know, a bit too old. But then he plays in the World Cup, you know, <laughs> um, yeah, and, Indian, an Indian summer. Well, yeah. definitely, he had about three of them. I think mm. uh, he's one of only two players that has played in five World Cups. He's the only outfield player, I think. Yeah, the other is um, the former Mexican goalkeeper Antonio. Uh, Carvajal um, and he set a, a, a world record of 25 uh, appearances at World Cups which is, which is incredible the, unfortunately the last one for him um, was a 3-0 loss uh, against Croatia in 98 which is a shame uh, the, for a player of such calibre but he's already out. won it you know. it's, well, not, yeah. it's not as though he's had yeah, well, yeah, a bad time at World yeah, Cups can, you know. um, that medal will it's come almost like, that's almost like you know, winning the lottery then like stubbing your toe it's, it's <laughs> annoying but <laughs> well, you know, like, uh, you've won the lottery so it doesn't matter stubbing <laughs> your toe on the silver screen maybe <laughs> um, and uh, he did play in uh, Euro 2000 of course and the Germans didn't do very well and it was it was a great shame I remember because Matthias was, was slated at times in that tournament because he was well off the pace and mm. Germany weren't very good and That's I just surprising. remember thinking 10 years earlier you know as you said, what, Luke, a, man, what yeah. a World Cup and what a player and he was the best player in that tournament and to see him getting slagged off yeah. Ah, it was. It I mean, makes you wonder whether they should, whether the referee should have hung his boots up. Yeah, know? because I, as I, I, was, I mean, he didn't play well, so it was understandable. But I think mm. he deserved a little bit more respect. Mm-hmm. That's that's all I'm saying. I mean, for a guy who's Germany's most cap player with 150 caps. I mean, and that's Germany yeah, through the eighties and nineties. You know when you're picking over the bones of a huge failure in, yeah. in a tournament, that sort of thing's going to happen. Isn't it? Yeah. One thing that's worth remembering, though, by the way, is 150 caps and Germany were performing yeah. at the very highest level yeah. throughout in that the, In the eighties and nineties, yeah. well, any era for Germany, but yeah. in the, you know. <laughs> what an achievement <laughs> He's absolutely breathtaking You know um, But what was not, what was a nice touch He was named an honorary captain Of the German national team In 2001 mm. um, Because in September 2000 After a brief stint In uh, in America um, 
playing in, uh, for, for what they are now as New York, New York Red Bulls uh, the Metro uh, style they, they were back then yeah uh, he he played a little uh, time for them and, and retired in September 2000 and since retiring he's gone on to do some management yeah. uh, at various places uh, including in Austria in Hungary uh, Brazil uh, and currently in charge of the Bulgarian national team mm, yeah but uh, that's quite re- relatively recent, actually. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But it's where, as a player, we um, remember him most fondly. Uh, the man th- to win the first ever FIFA World Player of the Year and hold the record uh, number of appearances for for uh, anybody at a World Cup. But I shall end with a quote from Diego himself, which is from his book "I Am Diego," <laughs> 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 and he said, "Mateus is the best rival I've ever had." And that's enough to define him, ladies and gentlemen. He has to be oh, the big man. <laughs> <laughs> Always Mateus. making it about himself. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he's uh, you know, uh, Mateus played in so many World Cups. He's also had four wives. He has, yeah, not wow. bad. Ridiculous. Loads. He's packed a lot in. He has <laughs> to his life. <laughs> his most recent one was a twenty-one-year-old uh, model. But now I think that's on the rocks again. We well, want oh. one for each World Cup, doesn't it? <laughs> 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 yeah. Literally a trophy wife, Richard. <laughs> 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 <laughs>